What's up, everybody? My name is Alchemy. Welcome to the channel. If you have been paying attention to the live streams, I've been complaining and doing the B word of not making stuff or having beat block or whatever. And to be honest with you, I feel like it's been going on for a few months now. So I'm kind of fed up with it. And what I'm going to do is really what I should have done in the first place, which is give myself permission to make something stupid and something crappy. And so today we are going to cook. The goal is to make a beginning, a middle, and an end as quickly as possible. And I'm not going to worry about details. I'm not going to worry about, you know, oh, this sounds like this. This sounds like whatever. We're just going to speed run getting a groove going. We might make a quick variation to it. Then we'll create an intro, and then we're going to create an outro. So uh, I don't know how this is going to turn out. And to be honest with you, like my intention is almost try to make it bad and try to make it stupid. So if that seems something that you're willing to lean into, then this could be perhaps a helpful exercise. I want to have fun making music. And while I am trying to keep up with my peers and the people that I look up to, sometimes it's just not happening. And so you find yourself at a crossroad of, do you want to give up having fun making tunes for the sake of trying to you know, match an expectation that might be unrealistic? Maybe not tomorrow, maybe not in the next few days, but right now. Or do you, you know, you want to keep having fun so that way you want to show up to the studio again? That's kind of the question that I'm asking myself and we're going to figure that out today. So I've got a couple of rules. I might do minimal sound design, but I'm not going to be making much stuff from scratch. I have a whole repertoire of different sounds and whatnot that I can use. In fact, what I might even do is just utilize the electronic stuff and uh, like the E series of, of drums and then do a little bit of work on that. But yeah. So I don't have anything else to say. Let's go ahead and get some stuff up in here and then we will have some fun. So first off, um, I know that I said that I'm not going to do some sound design, but I still need to pull some sounds out. And so what I think I'm going to do is pull up some recent things that I've made in the last few days, which I think one of them sounded pretty cool. We can use Gloomy Gulch. Maybe we can use Gravekeeper. We're going to start off with some basses and stuff. And so uh, I've got some sounds. Let's start with F. And I'm going to do something like this. That's kind of cool. Okay. So. I think what I'll do is I'll start with that. Maybe get a couple more. See if I can speed that up a little bit. So. That one was pretty good. I just want some variations of some of these sounds and that way I can kind of utilize this to maybe make a stupid bass line that's all going to be an F, push F to win hashtag. One thing I do want to do, I can stretch it I suppose, but I'm really going to try to be as minimal as possible when it comes into this stuff, but let me see what's going on here. That's a little bit, that's fine, that's fine. Good, I like those. And then I'll do some pitching for fills. So. Sounds good. That was pretty cool. I like that a lot of that movement is more mids than anything. So cool. All right. <clears throat> Next up, we are going to take some of this stuff and find a downbeat and start putting a bass line together. So let's go ahead and I'm going to go ahead and maybe start the track over here. So let's grab all this. And most of my workflow, if you know, is just pretty much manipulation of audio. Like I know that I did the sound design in a synth and stuff, but when it comes down to it, I try to be a little bit more crafty when it comes to this kind of stuff, just so that way I can kind of get the same sound every time. And also I don't have to really worry so much about like phase or any of that other stuff, but we're gonna go ahead and just kind of Cool. 
Let's go ahead and find another piece. So maybe we can find a relationship between this, so... Boom. Yeah, maybe just something kind of like that. Let's go ahead and bring these up. Same thing here. Maybe something like that, so... And maybe have this here, so... Cool. So now that we have that, we can kind of have this repeat in some cases. And so um, I'm going to take that little thing right here and create a reverse sound. And probably right there, I think, is a good place. Just cut that off. Go like that. And... Cool. All right, let's get some hats. So, boom, ta, 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 ta. boom, ta, ta. Just trying to sound it out. And maybe right there we can add that little. Get a snare in. Maybe something like that. Um, I've taken the time to make a bunch of my own stuff from beforehand, so um, there's that while I'm just pulling from that. And then while we're at it, we can go ahead and set this into the percussion. We can set these bases here into the sidechain. Then we can set uh, the clap here, kind of like so. And then <clears throat> make this just a little bit early, kind of like that. Make this one a little bit late, or make that one on time. And then this one can also be there. So maybe what we can do is kind of have that suction in and have like a, a, a break. Cool. Let's go ahead and paste that over here. And then now we need a kick. So I'll type in Alchem Kick. Yeah, that sounds like that could be cool. Yeah. 
Maybe we can do like a reverse with that. So. Maybe I can do something like here. And so what I'm going to keep in mind just for all of you is that like if I have an idea for something, so for example, like this, then I'll lean into it. But if I don't, whatever, it's fine. Just leave it, you know, and maybe you can color it later, come back to it and just that's that's OK. You know, uh, let's go ahead and add some life. Let's see if we can get something interesting through that. <clears throat> yeah, that could be cool. Okay. So I'll take this stuff, see if I can find some other interesting pieces of percussion to it. I don't want it to be too busy, but I do want to see if I can find something interesting with this uh, to be able to kind of cook along with it. So that's kind of cool. Now what we can do is we can use this part right here and reverse. So we want to command J that, then reverse it. And then we can kind of let that have some spaces in between. And with this, I'm going to cut everything else off kind of like so and see if I can leave some spaces in between just to try to get the groove where I want it to be. Because once we have that, then we can just cool So now we can kind of take this and maybe paste that there. Dope. Okay, so now we'll take these, all of this stuff, <clears throat> and we'll rename this as base. Sure, bass. And let's go fuse compressor. We're going to just kind of crank this a bit. Add some saturation. Um, hard clip this. Maybe turn it down by like two decibels. And then we can grab some EQ here and just figure out if there's any peaky stuff. So now I'm going to turn down the clap just a little bit. It sounds okay, but um, it's a little bit oppressive. And I really want the bass to come out and shine. Dope. Okay, next up, let's grab some Pro R. This is what I always do on my basses, so if you're wondering. Uh, this just adds a little bit of character and a little bit of space 
to a little bit of dimension, if you will. Uh, we can take out the low end of this. You can see that I'm using the auto gate to kind of cut it off so that way it maintains the space. Add in a kick right there. Make that a little bit sooner. Okay, cool. So one thing that I'm going to shoot for first is we're going to do a different fill at the end of that eight bars. Cool. Uh, maybe we can go fishing again. I'm going to add the pitch mod on this. Maybe I can add the bandpass mode, which is uh, something that I started doing, which is just a, a parallel chain to add this. And it's going to slightly alter it, so make it a little bit more morphy. There really is an art to doing pitch bin basses, so. Okay, that was actually sweet. So, um, I really like the inflections of when it's like the the thing. Uh, it, it needs to sound like it's dying and in pain. Otherwise, I don't like it. So, what I might do... To see if I can create a fill here for fun where we can let that lead in kind of like so pull off everything else for now just kind of turn it off yeah that's fine and then we are going to Maybe here. So I have this thing where I hear it to where I want it to be like, row, 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 row. Um, what I could also do is just figure that out within a slice of time. So let's say I want to confine it within this. So maybe it can be something kind of like that. Do boom, 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 and then let it fade out there. So, and then maybe what I can do is crossfade these. So, kind of like so. So it can be like a. And then I'm just going to stretch that out, so. Cool. Then on this, I'll take this and I'll go Command-B. 
just kind of that sounds pretty cool so let's go ahead and just spend a moment on that and grab a filter and this is the kind of stuff that i enjoy is like just having some sounds to work with and kind of letting it go um i put a lot of pressure on myself to try to come up with like interesting and compelling hooks and stuff but a lot of times it just I don't know, as of late, it just hasn't panned out. So maybe we can give this a little bit of notch. Maybe a little bit different. Just kind of mess around a bit and see how it goes. And then I'll tell you something fun that we can do, which is we can grab a comb filter and place that on an effects too. And I said I wasn't going to do much sound design, but whatever. Um, I know that it's going to probably be somewhat cool. So we can have this set to be a little bit on the negative side. And go LFO. And then just kind of let this do its own thing, but really slow. So... Now we've got an 8-bar loop. Dope. So then we can kind of maybe find something different there. Let's just leave that for now. Uh... Do something a little bit different here as well. Cool. So now what I'm going to do is on this, I'm going to uh, crossfade it just a bit because I can hear it clicking. All right. Now on these guys, I'm going to just join them. And then I want to maybe see if I can. Oh, I got to bounce it. So I'll bounce it and then see if I can do just like a pitch bin and see if that's any cool. So. Maybe what we can do is Do something like that. Whatever, just keep going. Cool. So I really like that, whatever that was. So we're going to take that. And kind of let that swing a bit. Let that play for four bars. All 
And then we can just take this part and let that play out as well. You can do like a little break kind of like that and maybe just have like a little shuffle. Grab both of these. I'm trying to hit shift without looking at the computer, but it's not working as well as I wanted to. I'm going to turn this down by a lot. So that way we've got a little bit of a shuffle. So. We can kind of grab something like this and go, sorry, I'm not talking much, by the way. Um, I'm trying to like be creative while still, still explaining stuff. So we can kind of, Just gonna make this try to be at a somewhat similar level with this. Um, so now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to grab a delay over the drums super fast because I already know what I want. There it is. We got our little vinyl scratch right there. So we can place that within the percussion and then just find, I think it's right there. There it is. And just kind of lay that in right there. Almost. Let's place it right there. There it is. So. I'm gonna go ahead and grab the face plant thing now and then I'll just make a simple chord out of it. So maybe we can go into a pad or whatever and just. I'm going to switch this over to the granular, which is a slightly different sound, so... Um... Sorry. You just start with a single chord, kind of like that. And kind of utilize that and see what that sounds like going into it. Maybe we can just add a filter or something. We don't need it to be perfect. I just want to start with it. And 
There it is. Okay. All I did was pitch this up by one. So these two are uh, just one semitone above. So. Okay, so I actually really like that, um, which is a very simple melody, but we're going to take this. Sorry. Which is a, a pretty sick, a pretty sick like offbeat thing. I do need to correct it a little bit, as you can see, but... Let me just go ahead and go Command-J, so that way I know where I'm actually at. I don't know if it's latency or what, but like, I'm terrible. So, uh, we can add that in here, and go like this, solo this. Now that we have something a little bit musical, and tie that in, I'm going to grab this same chord. We're going to create tension with this. And go reverse. We're going to pitch this up. I'm not sure if how I want to leave that yet, but we'll get ready for the second section here in just a minute. So, um... So what we can do is bring this over at the beginning, and in a second we'll start thinking about an intro. <clears throat> and then... So we'll leave that out until that last moment. We can always add the details later. Um, but what we're going to segue into is maybe instead of having uh, just a repeat of this, We can kind of have a different section now. And we can do something that is maybe just like an 808. So very quickly, just third harmonic, shaper table, turn this down, grab a filter. See that? So a lot of times within this stuff, you want to be mindful because sometimes this can be so pronounced that it might seem like your bass is fat, but it like overshadows the fundamental. And that's not usually a good thing. Sometimes in, in some cases it can be. But if you take this away, kind of like so, and then you add another shaper table, and you kind of do the stack thing then you can kind of play along with uh, getting unique types of, of sounds with this. 
uh, especially if you like add some movement or something as well. So we can even do something kind of like that where it's like, maybe make it sharper. Let's go ahead and grab this and set this to like plus. There you go. And if you want this to have some other kind of character, like just create a parallel chain. So I don't want to spend too much time on this, but let's say I wanted to add in like a harmonic or something. Uh, we can just send this to lane two, turn this down, which that sounds stupid, but if you send it through some more distortion and another filter, then sometimes you can get some cool stuff, so. to kind of just level it off. You can do another one that's just a dip on those low mids. Sometimes it's cool to just kind of have a little bit of character. So now what I'm going to do without even thinking about this is I'm going to paste this here and something else that I might consider is um, I really like the percussion on this side so I want to see what we can do with maybe utilizing this instead so let's go almost always work which is really cool i think i'm gonna go just with the but what i'm also going to do is kind of something like this to where it's See what happens if I like severely dip this. Cool. We can add some glide if we want. And then something else that I think is super helpful is to maybe have some hold on this but to veer it off because what that does is it opens up space and gives you some headroom so that's one thing that we can do with 808s we can do something kind of like this and have a relationship with this now. So we can go. Here we can go like this and just do like a doo doo. Cool. Now this leaves open a space which I want to take advantage of, which is right here. 
And we're just going to call this row <laughs> or row. <laughs> um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back into this and go here and just... I'm going to try to fish for this, or I might even just do it myself because I want to see if I can pull it off. But what I want is a... Maybe over on this side. All right, so we might need a band pass for this. What might be more useful, just because I want something very specific, is to grab a band pass like this. Uh, grab an LFO and then just be very intentional with what I want this to be. So, uh, so that's the movement of it. It doesn't sound very good right now, but that's okay. Let's see what happens if we put it before everything. So, let's do the same thing here, but let's also add in this and make this full frequency. So, so in order for this to work, what we're going to need, oh wait. sync that so there we go I'm going to back off of it just a little bit and I think that we can probably use that so it's basically just a womp or a row that's the best way that I can explain it. But the reason why this is good is because it's just a nice little nice little fill that we can toss in our bases here. And uh, this should probably be renamed mid-base because I don't really think that we need to push the 808 through any more hard distortion than what we already have. But we can start there and just use that as like a pre-sound, even if it's not ideal. Um, because, well... Yeah, it could be better, but whatever. So. Now, maybe this needs to be a little bit longer. Some cool sounds in that. Let's see if maybe we can use a filter plus and just put a small amount of effort into it. It actually sounds pretty cool. So I'm going to duplicate that and then I'm going to change this Is something like here and then maybe adjust this back to where the sub is still in so cool uh, let's change this and see if we can get a different uh, filter type See if we can saturate it. Okay. Let's see if we can bring back some of those mids, which I'm totally like blowing the sound out, but sometimes this might help. So we'll see. Okay. So it's not working out, but that's okay. Because we can just say, you know, 
color it something different and just come back to it because I don't really feel like spending a bunch of time on it, which I know that it, it sucks, but that's all right. Um, so every two bars, two, three, four, this is an accent sound. So that way it gives us a little bit of stuff in between. Um, but now what I'll do is I will take this melody and I'm just going to play for just a little bit on another patch that I have, which is factory or really anything, anything that's like Bells of Atlantis or Sea Factory or anything of the sort, um, which this pack isn't even out. It's not an advertisement. I suppose if you want to have this workflow, then Requiem 1 and 2 is available on my website. But this is more for a, this is more for me than it is for you, to be honest, uh, because I have just been in this terrible beat block and not having any fun with what I'm doing. But right now I'm having fun because I don't give a shit. And that's what I need to, that's what we all need in order to get this. So um, I'm going to leave this on loop. And I'm just... Okay, so this sound might actually work because the nature of this song is, is pretty aggressive. Um, I do think that mixing this is going to be a pain in the ass uh, because of how aggressive it is and everything in this track is relatively aggressive, but um, I don't care. Let's just use it. And then maybe what we can do is elaborate on it or something, right? So... Um, I'll just duplicate this and then pitch it down by two. And then that way uh, we can also make it kind of like that. So. So we can kind of let that play out. And then uh, we can switch up the snare right here, which is usually a good time to do that. So knock on snare. Or we can totally switch up the groove. So. Just kind of do that for now. Pull this over here. Two, three, four. And then something that might be kind of sick is kind of pulling back on the energy as well. So kind of like that. Um, where's this supposed to be? Oh, right. And then we could delete that. 
Just grab this and move this over. And with these guys, we're going to do something where, I don't know, maybe what we can do is uh, like pitch it down or something. So that way it brings the energy, like it changes the energy, but keeps the groove. So. And now what we can do is switch this up. So maybe like, you know, just something like that. And then maybe something else that we could do is, uh, yeah, why not? Let's just pitch everything up, set it to slice and uh, set this, the tail to none. So let's see if that helps at all. So we can. This is so loud. So yeah, look, now we have a song and it's not a great song. I don't like this song. I would not never show this to anybody, but uh, we did it. So now what we need to do is uh, uh, make some changes to this. So maybe what we can do is just create an empty track and go switch it, switch it up, just color it here. So that way we know to do some kind of variation or some kind of detail for this. And same thing for this, right? Um, but what I wanted to do... Oh, right, was... Um, we are going to switch the snare up again. So the first four, we can do that. And then on this one, we can go back to that boom, clap, clap, boom, clap. Let's make this one a little bit early, a little bit early.
this needs to be here. I think there. One, two, three, four. Seems good. We're going to simplify this. But we're going to turn it up. So just to have a little bit of different character. And then we can have that fill in right there as well. So that, that might be okay. But that way we've got a little bit more consistency. So. So yeah, what I want to do is maybe have a switch up right here. I'm going to bounce this. I'm going to stretch this like a lot just because I want there to be a weird ass sound. And the other thing that I should do is I'm going to move this to a different, to a different track. Cause I don't want anything on this to be side chain. Actually that's, it doesn't matter because I really don't want anything else playing over this at the same time. And maybe on these guys, we can pitch these up by 12. Oops, slice. And then let's see what happens if we... Let's just try that and then whatever. If it doesn't work out, it's fine. It's not that big of a deal, but okay. Then we go here, we go boom, and we go. All right. I want that to be a little bit more off. So when we go to double time, or yeah, I guess, yeah, double time. We'll just turn this up and then see what that sounds like. So and then I want spaces in between that so that way it's not just a rolling thing. And then now we kind of have most of the structure of a track. So the final thing that we need to do is like, again, there's so many holes that are in this and so many problems, but I just wanted to make a beat from like start to finish. And that's the stuff that has really been blocking me as of late. And I think that I just need to take this approach. And anytime that I'm having beat block, I just need to watch this and then we'll, we'll recap here in a second, but let's go ahead and wrap up the intro. So um, we have some chords here now, which we can just use as the intro in the beginning. So What I might do is just grab this guy. And on this, you know what? We're going to try to pull a John Casey here. And uh, if you don't know, John Casey has a really cool tune called Jammerai, which it's literally a four bar intro and he's like, get to the point, which 
uh, I don't know John Casey, but shout out to John Casey. People that I know know John Casey, and everyone should know who he is, especially if you like this kind of music. If you don't like this kind of music, you should still know who he is because he's pretty, pretty prolific, I would say. Um, my point with that was that we can do something kind of like that. We can go like that. Why are these? Oh, that's why, because this one needs to be plus one. So I guess we do A bars, but... Um, we can do something kind of like this. Just kind of wash it out. Set so it to repitch. And like, the cool thing about about doing intros, especially if you do it as like one of the last things is that we really just need to take stuff from here and put it in here and make it make sense. So like you don't need to write a crazy ass. Yeah, you don't need to write like a crazy ass thing uh, in order to kind of get what you want out of it. You just need to there we go. Sorry. People are texting me and stuff. Um, we just need to try to make... <laughs> I'm so sorry, I forgot my thoughts. But yeah, we just need to try to take things from what we already have and make it make sense and one way that we could do that is by placing it right at the beginning and make it so that way it's like fading in and creating some aspect of tension wow that was hard for me i am so sorry that i could not talk in those few, few moments somebody gave me a phone call just now and like my my focus just went squirrel uh we're still working though so so now what I'm gonna do is uh, try to get some stuff. something like maybe not that actually sounds like I'm gonna try this do da -da.
Yeah, so I think what I wanted to do there was have half of that. So like... <laughs> And then this needs to have one more bar over this, wherever that's supposed to be. So. Just kind of mess with this now, so. That was, that's kind of cool. So, uh. Uh, right here we can do a cool little moment. To where we go, like. Maybe not so far, so maybe like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Da, 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 da. do like a little bit of a kick so um yeah the last thing that i'll say is on this part as this is starting to build for the second half we can kind of just do something like this move this to this side have this in convolution <laughs> And cool. So kind of something like that. And I want that impact to be pretty big. So all right. So now uh, that that seems a little bit dry, let's go ahead and find a crash. That'll that'll do. We don't really need anything super fancy, but if we just kind of have something like that, and then maybe a ring mod. <laughs> Turn that up a little bit. Oh, it's supposed to be right here. Cool. So, uh, 
so now within this, um, I think that just having this as an idea and letting this be utilized for open to interpretation, right, is a big thing for this because in my opinion, I think that it's okay, but it's obviously like super boring and needs a lot of details filled in and stuff. But as a means of creating something from beginning to end, we had an intro, main section, main section two is the same thing, had a little bridge, created a second part, had another thing right here. And then now like we can go back and fill all the details, right? So if I wanted to be crazy with it, like, you know, we could go back and really try to finite and finesse. That's the word I'm looking for. We can really try to finesse, you know, some stuff like this where, and then on this one, we can delete that. Let's go back into our base and find another one. So. Or it doesn't even have to be a bass. We can do something kind of like that to where it's like. You know. Uh, maybe uh, we could even toss that in this. Where is this guy? And have some kind of. Not cliffhanger, but some kind of. Oh my god. Some kind of foreshadowing. So. I really like that. That's pretty cool. What happens if we... And uh, you can see like from there, we can build off of this. Now, one cool thing that I'll leave with, uh, because I don't want this video to be too long, I'm sure it's been a while already, is coming into this and soloing all of the things that are in the main section. So we could really just use the first few bars. And what we can do is have a lot of fun with just messing it up. So what I'll do is grab, and time is, is something that I like to use a lot, just because it can do some cool shit. But if we use this kind of like so, and you'll see that the speed and all this will change. We can also use this on the stretch. So change that to time, make that here, change this to random and make this some kind of stepper to where it's actually like moving. Um, then when we start to play with different devices after this or before, we can get some crazy sounds that we normally wouldn't be able to design ourselves like with intention, at least not until you do it first. And then you're like, oh, okay, I know how that's done. Uh, but this is a great place to like discover. So once we start getting things like this, right? Like, a lot of that stuff in this is awesome. Oh, and even some of that, right? Did you hear it? It was like, woo -woo -woo -woo. so utilizing those kinds of tools is a great way to like pseudo force your way into some really awesome sounds. Um, and what we can do is just place those in, in different spots to have our variation. So, you know, so something like that sounds pretty cool. And while we're listening to this together, <laughs> that's really cool. So maybe we can just push it right there and see what that does. So uh, we might need to turn it up. 
We might need to take the base out of it, but I'm not really too concerned with that, so. <laughs> Mixing is a totally different thing. You should never come to me for mix advice. <laughs> Uh, we could just like totally jack it up and do something crazy with it. So, I don't know, maybe like a flanger or something. That's nuts. I'm going to opt for the regular kilohertz flanger. Um, just because the other one, the other one's fine, but it's kind of doing weird stuff stuff so yeah there were some other sounds in here that were cool as well so yeah so we can do something kind of like that so Maybe something else. Uh, we can also like give the downbeat a break. So boom, 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 boom. Maybe right there would be a good place to kind of just do something different. Just to kind of break up the monotony of it, you know? So. Okay, so maybe not that sound. And then to kind of accommodate that, we can use another snare here. Just reverse that, take out the kick, just have some texture. So if we have like a reverb hit. Sure. It could be anything, you know, but just kind of turn it down so that way it's like impactful. up with that okay so um that's kind of weird and what i'm going to do to replace that is have this here so we're going to take the first transient of this which is right there you kind of have to look at the waveform to see it sometimes but if you look at the difference between that and the rest of this you can kind of tell uh, maybe if i change the picture of it you see how this is like th thicker right there I don't know. It doesn't matter. But yeah, just the first transient and pitch this up. And then just add some ROM. So.
wanted that to be it was a little bit off. Wait, what? I don't know what happened there, but okay. We need that ding ding ding. <laughs> kind of do the same thing here um maybe for fun we can just have something a little bit different so tempo and then like the the thing is is like and i don't know why this is so hard to embrace but if you can do it this way to where you just let yourself write and then go back and look at what you like and what you don't like then it really does make the process so much more fun. But, dude, I I don't know. I've written and made so many videos on, like, oh, how to beat beat block and all that stuff and whatever. Um, but, yeah, it's just, it's it's irritating. So we're just going to automate some ROM over this as well. And then what we can do is just slowly build this up over time. Kind of like that, so, uh... And uh, maybe what we can do is also pitch this up. And then with the intro or the outro, you can do whatever you want. You can honestly just like end the song or fade it out or whatever. But yeah, so uh, this could definitely use some work. It's obvious. Well, yeah, it could totally use some work. But we made something that was an intro. We made something that had a main section with our cute little bases that <clears throat> I spend so much time making. And then we have stuff that gives it. A, a shitty identity but they do work together because everything is in key and obviously this section has way more energy than this section but that's okay because we're having fun so anyways this is my plea or my proposition if you are having a hard time writing music um, I came in with today's intent of being like I'm just going to write some bullshit and I need to remind myself to do that and remind you as well if you're struggling with the same thing uh, if you like the sounds that I used or you like my sounds in general, you can check them out at alchemy.com. Um, you can also book lessons with me. You can come in every once in a while for tune feedback. We've been doing it every Saturday while I play games. But let me know in the comment section if you all have anything that you feel like is helpful or uh, like to add to the conversation or if you have any questions about what I'm doing here. Um, or if we need to take smaller steps because you're having a hard time just putting a groove together because I've been there as well. So in any case, I really appreciate you all. And hopefully you had just as much fun as I did just kind of messing around and being like, okay, screw it. It doesn't matter because really nobody cares. Nobody cares. And uh, you all have seen me cook good music on stream. You've probably seen me cook more bad music and you got to get through the bad stuff to get to the good stuff, which is something that uh, Chi has told me several times now. So yeah, thanks everybody. I really appreciate it. And um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else that I want to say, but I don't have anything. So we'll end the video there. Bye everybody. Have an awesome rest of your evening.